Hi everybody, welcome to the Todd and Aaron Daily Stream. We've got a show for you. First of all, I got a video. I'm gonna show you how to take a $30 camping cooler and turn it into $400. Cooler, it's pretty nice. Plus, Boom. I have the epic story that everything with ovaries is going to want to hear. It is the Bridezilla story to conquer all Bridezilla stories. I'm starting to sweat already. I'm so excited. All right, so locally, what do we have? Wow, you know, there's always the hoarding stories where like a health inspector goes into a house and all of a sudden they find 3,027 animals. Right, right. And it's interesting, the psychology of animal hoarding is because it always starts with like a rescue intention. Like, I will save these animals. This is like, you know, a right. stray animal. I will drag that stray animal into my house, kicking and screaming, and it will be mine. Right. In this particular case... And that just keeps going. Yeah, and it's Taylorsville. And then after a while, they can't really do take care of them anymore and things just kind of... A hundred small breed dogs are going to be up for adoption at the Chihuahua West Valley City bet, huh? and Taylorsville Animal How Shelters. How many? It gets worse. One hundred small breeds. They were in horrible conditions inside a Taylorsville house. The animal services were like... They had no idea. David Moss is from Animal Services Director, and he says, you just go into auto mode. He says, okay, this is, this is the plan, and we just get started. He said that people had to keep leaving the house because they were, they were starting to pass out the think? smell of ammonia. Do you think? Because it's intense. It can I don't think you flat. need to go into more detail. Uh, they, it looks like they were walking in feces, he said, so they were just coated. So the first thing was just massive bathing. Um, they have a vet who's already checking all the animals, and if you're interested... Um, oh, they can... You can visit the shelter at 4522 West, 3500 South. Oh, cool. They think that the animals might be available for adoption as early as tomorrow. So a lot of them, a lot of them are still healthy enough and, and they, they looking might be able for to love. Do this. Now, so and you know what you do with a house? You know, they're very, well, not done yet. They're very sweet, but you have to remember these animals are going to need a little more time. It's almost like they're part feral, so you're going to have to kind of start right. over with them. But they're so sweet, and God knows they deserve it. Here's the thing that's scary. While 100 dogs have been caught so far... There's more still in the house. They're expected to be rescued within the coming days. They had to stop operations because, number one, that's all they could take. And number two, the workers were passing out. So they still have more to rescue. Um, the cost for adoption is 50 to 60 bucks. How cool is that? Give me the address again. God knows these poor animals deserve it. 4522 West, and that's 3500 South, and that's the Taylorsville and West Valley City Animal Services Shelters. Now, you're so, going to think I'm kidding about this, but you know what you do with a house? Tell me. You bulldoze it, and you light it on fire because there is then nothing. Then salt the ashes and cover it with <laughs> earth and... And then, then tar or oh, something. And then cover it with a dome of concrete. There's, Seriously, there's nothing you there's can do to... There's nothing. The wood is... Okay, I'm going to stop now. Even though I kept thinking, well, every time you mentioned it, I was thinking to myself that you're cleaning the house out with a snowblower. But I'm going to stop now no, because that's kind of gross. No, not that. All right. Well, it's interesting. I watched an episode of Hoarders once because I am obsessed with that show. I live for it. I'll just... It's the most exciting thing in the world, and I don't know why. But they had an animal story, and you know how they usually kind of clean it up, and even though it's a little threadbare at the end, it's clean, and they can start over. They literally, after clearing out the animals, and they were starting to try to figure out what to do with the stuff, they went, we give up, and they, the city bulldozed it, and they put her in an elderly living care center because they're... You just, you just can't. They it, said, and it was so sad. Remember the, the guy who's in charge of the cleanup crew? goes, we've always been able to save a house, always. And it's like, mm -mm. No. Not gonna happen here. No. Sorry. Now what was this about? This death? is this is uh this is really interesting. In in uh, England, um and this just happened uh, a couple months back, they took a Viagra and it is no longer a prescription. It goes on the Over open the market. You walk up to the pharmacist and you said, I'd like a Yeah. And there's so many jokes running through my head right now. I'd like the little blue pill, please. No, that's not one of the jokes. They okay. just Hundreds of jokes. Just can you see it in the back of my head? It's I can just, see you shaking with the desire uh, to just, just cut loose. Don't you? you know how they always have a. Uh, okay, so anyway, um, so um, so everyone Sorry, can step babe. up now. Usually, you go to a doctor, and if you remember in the commercial, it says, "Are you healthy enough to have sex?" And it's like, if I had a coronary, I'd be in. So these people. So yeah, they're checking blood pressure and cholesterol levels and things never, with the doctor, I'm and not they sure do all those cholesterol. things. Cholesterol. But these people never checked, you see, because they could get by it like aspirin. So they went and they bought it. And so far, it's been linked to 19 deaths. And now, that's just like in one small area. That's not like all of Europe. Yeah, since uh, 1998, 166 deaths because people, cardiac uh, issues have come up because this... 
so to speak, um, be, because, because um, these people have been inactive. And it's not like they're jogging or riding bikes. Uh, but they thought, the hey, I'd like to do some kind of exercise. And they thought this, this, one seems this like would a good be one. a way to go. Now, I don't know if you remember, and they said this about my grandfather and uh, on my dad's side. Um, and my grandfather had a, a big heart attack and died on a golf course. I didn't know that. Yeah. You have ne this is Grandpa Collard? Yeah. My dad's dad. You never told me that. Really? Well, he was out golfing and, and like the I did not know this. 6T or whatever, he just boom and he was gone. And, uh, and you always hear that comment. You always hear that comment where someone says, well, at least he went doing something, something he, he loved. loved to do. Which in this case would make sense except for the other person with them. That seems somewhat profoundly unfair for the partner. Because that'd be a little creepy. So anyway, um, yeah. so so I don't know if this is going to happen. It's got to happen in the United States at some point because I guess they're losing their patent on it or something, and now they're going to allow it to uh, in England. So it must be coming here. So this is what I want you to do: get a treadmill, start working out, maybe do some hiking, maybe a little lifting, heavy lifting, nothing. Uh, improve. Some deep knee stretches. Do some stretches. Stretches are maybe, good. Maybe not stretches. <laughs> Just prepare, prepare yourself, okay? All right. Um, uh, coming up next, coming up next, um, I thought about this. Erin and I, um, and uh, uh, Erin is such a good sport. She goes uh, camping in the desert with oh, me. Oh, no, I'm so excited. It's going to be so, fun. So, and you so, always make us comfortable. So um, I have a new thing to make it even better and how to turn... You know that Coleman cooler you have in the garage that you bought for like 30 bucks? I can make it worth $400, I think. And that video is coming up next. I have faith in you. How do you turn a cheap cooler into a better cooler? This is an experiment, and I'm going to walk you through this really quick because I had this idea. First of all, um, if you want a really good cooler, go out and get a Yeti, except I don't have uh, $400 for a Yeti cooler. What I do have is this uh, Coleman Extreme 5, which kind of suggests that it'll last five days while you're camping. Now, I'm going to the desert for five days, and my wife is going along because I told her there was lobster. One of the things I've done, and I've done this nine times when I've gone to the desert, is around the day, well, three and a half, maybe four, the ice is gone. And this cooler is just going to be for ice. And I have my food and other things in another cooler. So this is just for ice. So I thought to myself, at first I was thinking about wrapping it. And then I said, no, no, because you can't use the handles. There's wheels, there's a handle that pops up and that would be, and there's wind and stuff like that. And I thought, why not line the cooler? So this is what I'm going to show you today. And basically, I went down to the, the, the house store there, the Home Depot, and what I got was, this is basically bubble wrap with foam on both sides. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this, and I'm going to place it and make like a, a, what is it, a liner for the entire cooler. And uh, that way, uh, I think it's going to reflect the cold back in and the heat back out. Now, one thing I want to show you on this is the weakest part of any cooler is usually the lid. Now the reason it is is uh, because like right here where this rib is, this is only a quarter inch thick. Now this is the regular thickness of the insulation. Quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch. Now if you're a crazy person, uh, you could cut styrofoam out, find a glue that does not eat styrofoam, and go ahead and block this in. And that would help quite a bit. But instead of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that material and I'm going to line this and come up and make a flap so when it goes over, it's going to keep the top cooler. Now, <laughs> here's how you start an argument. All right, so I'm going to be using dry ice along with regular ice. Now. 
there's so many arguments about this. Okay, if I'm making food and I'm freezing the food and I put it in another cooler, I'm gonna put dry ice on top of the food because it'll keep everything frozen. If I'm gonna use ice and this is gonna be opened a lot, open and closed, I'm gonna put the dry ice on the bottom. Now, there's a couple things you gotta do before I start lining this. Now, one of the things is, is that <coughs> If you put ice on the bottom of a cooler, not only, you know how cold it is? It's 109 degrees below zero. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put insulation on the bottom. And you can just cut some insulation like that. Then you wrap your dry ice and you put it in uh, I don't know, paper bags. The more you seal it, the more you insulate it, the colder and the longer it will last to keep your ice, which is sitting in this, dry. And that's what I'm going for. So let's go ahead and cut the liner. Um, if you're a seamstress, if you're not, find someone and uh, we'll see how this turns out. All right, did I mention we're going to insulate the bottom of the cooler? Because if you don't, the styrofoam is under there. If you don't, it can actually crack the dry ice at 109 degrees below zero. Actually crack the bottom of the cooler and freeze anything like leather upholstery in your car or whatever. So you want to do that. So this is the way it fit in, which I kind of like. I don't think I'm going to make it watertight. I think I'm going to cut the side panels now and put those in. And if I need to, I can always put like some Gorilla Tape or something like that just to hold it in place. But you can see the flap too. The flap comes down. I'm going to help myself here. And I'll trim this off so when it closes, it's going to be uh, an envelope around uh, the dry ice. All right, so I have now lined the cooler. Now, I'm not going to worry about this because when the ice goes in, it's going to press it. I kept it down low enough that the lid will be able to be closed. I'm not going to worry about this. I tucked edges under. I'm not going to worry about the seal because when I need to drain the water, that's going to come in handy. And the lid up here is going to come over and fold over the ice like this. Then the lid will shut. And that's my new experiment with the Coleman Extreme 5. <laughs> so, I'm going to the desert in a couple days. I'm going to be there for five. I'll let you know how this turns out. And there is no lobster in the desert, but don't, don't tell my wife. Well, we'll see how this works out. The Todd and Aaron Daily Stream is brought to you by PC Laptops with desktops and laptops starting as low as $7.99 with a lifetime parts and service warranty. They fix phones too. Go to PCLaptops.com. And by Brio Technologies. They rent, sell, and install audiovisual components including professional sound, lighting, video, and intercom systems, components, projectors, interactive whiteboards, and classroom audio systems. Just go to BrioAudioVisual.com. Calm down. Calm down. All right, so do you want me to? No, just just do it. Just she has been waiting for this. She woke me up last night saying, I cannot wait to do this story. And so this goes out to all the women uh, of the Todd and Aaron daily stream. Aaron, would you please? We have all had our bridezilla stories. We have all endured them as bridesmaids or as friends or as family members. Every one of us. I have 18 bridesmaid dresses still stuck in a closet somewhere at my mom's house, and almost all of them are attached to a bridezilla story. They're lovely. But nothing. Nothing compares to this one. Here we go. <clears throat> this was a very long and rambling Facebook post that was placed upon a certain young woman's account here in the United States. I shall read it to you. Dear friends, it comes with great sadness that I am announcing the cancellation of our wedding. I apologize for canceling only four days beforehand. Unfortunately, my ex and I have broken up due to some recent and 
irreparable problems. We have decided to end our relationship and not go forth with any future proceedings. However, we are remaining civil and we are still a team for our son. After hours of tears, mental exhaustion, and even disassociation, I have come to this decision in one hour after posting this status, I am going to delete my Facebook. Social media has caused me only paranoia and toxicity. I will be spending these next two months backpacking in South America, trying to realign my soul and reestablish what is truly important to me. Hmm. I will be ridding myself of the toxic energy brought on by my friends and family, the ones I thought I could trust the most. Hence, I will be out of the country for all of October and November. Don't contact me. When I'm ready, I may make a new Facebook account and add back friends and family that have an effing stabbed me in the back. How did all of this come crashing down? Well, I invite you all on Facebook, players, bystanders, and the side characters of the people in my life. Well, that's flattering, right? How to be described like that? Look out for that word. To take a seat and listen. You're involved uh, somehow. Somehow everyone is wrapped in this mess. Even if you weren't invited to my wedding, I don't care. You might hear of the drama, yeah. and I'd rather you hear it from me. I'm not asking for sympathy. I just want to tell you my story. Uh, before I begin this mini novel, I invite all of you, including the the very serious C word, who have ruined your, my marriage and my life to put yourself in my shoes. For just once, once in my life, let me take the stage and let me voice the most painful moments of my life. First things were a fairy tale. I met the love of my life at 14. We were both young, but somehow just knew we were meant to be together. Our love grew deeper and wander through the years and fast forward to high school, we went for all strong all four years. <laughs> He put a ring on my finger at 18. It was worth $5,000. We put everything on the line for each other, everything. We attended the same community college, worked full time to build our dream, and we spent our days next to each other's sides. I was 20 when I realized I was pregnant, and after giving birth to Declan, I knew the next step would be to focus on my career and become financially stable. We saved and saved. I was in love. I was happy. We even got our degrees. It was hard, but it was so worth it. We managed to save up to $15,000 for a wedding, and since our love was like a fairy tale, huh. one where our son could be included, we wanted an extravagant blowout wedding. We started touring local venues, and we were torn between two, but then a local psychic said, go with the most expensive option. Psychic. And we thought, why not? We just needed a little push. Our dream wedding amounted to $60,000, all included with flights to Aruba. All we asked for was a little help from our friends and family to make this happen. This next part's in all caps, by the way. I specifically, I mean specifically, asked for cash gifts. How could we have our wedding that we dreamed of without proper funding? We had sacrificed so much and we only asked each guest for $1,500. We talked to a few people who said we could help make this come true. My maid of honor, who shall not be named, pledged $5,000 along with her planning services. My ex's family offered to contribute $3,000. So our request for $1,500 from all the other guests was not effing out of the ordinary. Like, we made it clear. If you couldn't contribute, you were not invited to our exclusive wedding. It's a once-in-a-lifetime party. So when we sent out our RSVPs and only eight people replied sending the check, we were effing livid. Eight people? <laughs> wow. You have richer friends than I do. How was this supposed to happen without a little help from our friends? To make matters worse, our ex's family backed out of their offer. And then suddenly more people backed out, including my serious C word, maid of honor, my best friend since high school. I was so shocked and tearful, and to make matters worse, it was only a month before the wedding. To cancel everything would have been unimaginable. What about my trip to Aruba? Desperately, we resent our invites and asked people to donate what they could. I mean, seriously, people. Resent. What is $1,500? Clearly not a lot. It could have been quite manageable <coughs> and within your budget. I've heard of people asking for more. Really? Huh? We also set up a GoFundMe account that only got us $250. I realized my dream where it was becoming, wedding was becoming a nightmare. And then it got worse. Well, oh, man. My ex came into the room and offered to get a Vegas wedding done. 
I laughed in his face, but he was dead serious. He wanted one of those cheap, raggedy, filthy, whore-like Vegas weddings. I mean, what? Was he out of his mind? Am I some hooch piece of trash, a hooker? Am I supposed to like the idea of getting married in the heart of shady gamblers, alcoholics, and the get-rich-fast fallacy? Oh, now she's developing some standards. I'm not sure there's a lot of hookers that cost $1,500, but go ahead. Suddenly, my body began to shake as I entered a panic attack. My ex left the room and didn't even apologize for his mm. horrid suggestion. I then called my maid of honor and cried my eyes out. Instead of sympathy, I was told that I was asking for too much and I should stick to my budget. I mean, no words can describe. How could someone who offered me thousands of effing dollars then deny me my promise money and tell me to shift down my budget? She knows my effing dream was a blowout wedding. I just wanted to be a Kardashian for a day. Oh, this explains so much. It's good to have goals. And then live my life like normal. I called her a filthy excuse for a friend and hung up. Then she blocked me off all social media. Rumors swirled. I received anonymous threats. My ex stayed out later and later. My bridesmaids climbed on the boat with my maid of honor and dissed me. They essentially told me I was crazy and asked for the deposit back on their dresses, which were $3,000. So I said, F you. I refuse to give it back until they can pay me back for my emotional distress. Yeah. My ex started to talk to my maid of honor and gossip about me behind my back. <sighs> anyway, I am exhausted. I'm bone tired. My heart is not the same. It is stone cold, fragmented and empty. Mm. I need to get away from this awful society. How hard would it have been to effing donate, friends? Do I matter to you? Just effing give me the money for my wedding. I won't even sugarcoat it. I won't even pretend that's not what I wanted. It was for a dream. I was stabbed, cheated on, and wrecked. So goodbye. <laughs> See you in two months. And friendly reminder to you, don't think you own me. I'm cutting all you snakes off. I'm living my life alone now. I only let in those who I believe have good intentions. Now, that was so much fun. Here is a quick short note from her cousin who had apparently been reading all the social media and many people had come to her asking questions because they wanted to know if this was a joke. And she said, wow, first of all, thank you for making my night. I've been sitting back watching the comments roll in. All of you are 100% accurate in the judgment of Susan, and I'm very glad I don't have to see her more than once a year. So yes, this is indeed a living, breathing human being, and sadly, I do share a small percentage of DNA with her. Clearly, she has entitlement issues, but I never knew she could be this obnoxious. No real red flags come to mind. She had humble beginnings and she's been working on her parents' farm since she was young. You wouldn't expect someone from an agricultural background to value Kardashian-style materialism, but hey, I noticed quite a few years ago she follows and likes Kardashian stuff obsessively. She mentions them frequently and references their lives a lot. She's especially envious of Kylie Jenner and has personally complained to me about not being able to afford to get lip fillers and implants. These aren't necessarily a red flag to me, but maybe social media has been getting to her head a bit. For her baby shower, she made a regular Target registry, but also insisted for one of the royal baby carriages. I think she's talking about a McLaren. They run about $4,000. Mm -hmm. uh, she manipulated her family and friends into pooling together to buy one. When no one pooled money at first, she made increasingly whiny posts about not being able to afford the best life for her baby. You know, you could get one for 300 and it'd be acceptable, you know what? maybe not. The story keeps going. We'll see you tomorrow on the Todd and Aaron Daily Stream. Maybe her Just feelings of embarrassment or shame is fueling her craving for luxury and making other people pay for it. And by the way, since she has a child who's only two, I have a very hard time believing me she's going to South America to go backpacking because she doesn't even have a passport.